What's up my friends, welcome back. You're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and today for you I'm checking out the T7 on-camera monitor from OC. As always, this is unsponsored, so strap in for a no-holds-bar review from a videographer's perspective. It's time for me to shut up and roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video I've popped in the description box below, and be sure to show some love for the channel by hitting that notification bell next to your sub button. It means a lot to me, it helps support the channel, plus you won't miss a video. Anyway, what is the T7? The OC T7 is a 7-inch on-camera monitor which displays full HD 1920 to 1200 resolution. Now that might not sound like very much these days, given that we've got cameras that shoot in 8K and even 12K, but when you look at the pixels per inch, which is actually 323, it actually has really good pixel density. Now that 323 PPI doesn't really compare to modern smartphones, which have nearer 450 or above, but it's all relative to the distance you are from the monitor. Let's just put this in perspective. This iMac 27 inch 5K retina display behind me has 218 PPI. So the T7 has over 50% more pixels per inch. In terms of brightness, the T7 is 3000 nits. Yeah, 3000, that's insanely bright. It's actually brighter than any monitor that Small HD make, including their ultra bright range, which are 2200 nits. The monitor I've been using for a little while now has been the Small HD Focus, which is a nice little monitor, really well priced, and it's only 800 nits and I'm fairly used to using it outdoors. So believe me when I tell you the first time I tried the OCT7 outside, I, it was a shocking experience. And it was a shocking experience using it indoors too. Here you can see the T7 at only half brightness and just look how much brighter it is compared to the rear screen of my A7S III. It's an 8-bit monitor, like most monitors of this size, particularly the on-camera type and it weighs 438 grams without a battery, which is actually really lightweight for its size. To put that in perspective, the Small HD Indy 7 and 702 Touch both weigh 535 grams without a battery, and the T7 can be battery powered or mains powered. It has a single slot for a standard NPS style battery. So what are the other features? The T7 has HDMI in and out, it doesn't have SDI, but you do get that on its bigger brother bundle, the G7. Uh, personally, I only need HDMI, so not a problem for what I use it for. The T7 accepts a 4K signal and supports HDR. It's got something called HDR emulation. The T7 does have an impressive contrast ratio of 1200 to 1, which is exactly the same as the small HD 703 Ultra Bright, which by the way, is a £3,000 monitor. You'll find all of the exposure tools that you'd expect from a really high-end monitor. You get different aspect options, safe zones, centre marker, framing options, level function, false colour, zebra, histogram, waveform, vector scope, focus assist, focus peaking, built-in lookup tables, audio meter, and then there's image resize should you need it. The built-in lookup tables are, I think, a really big deal because I just find if you import lookup tables that you'd use for grading into your monitor, they don't always translate as well. Dedicated lookup tables that are designed for monitor use are bound to be more accurate, and it's definitely the case when using the S-Log3 lookup table that's in the T7. So what about the build quality? The T7 has a plastic housing, which I don't love. I wish companies would just make a push towards using more sustainable materials, but I get that plastic is probably the most appropriate at this time. So it's a lightweight unit, as I said, and it's definitely sturdy enough. It comes with a ball head for mounting the T7 on your camera, which I appreciate the sentiment, but it's a very small, very cheap and fairly flimsy ball head that personally I wouldn't trust to support the weight of the T7 with a battery. And that's why I picked up a small rig tilt and swivel monitor mount. It's solid and I'd recommend it, and I've linked it below if you want to find that exact product. You also get a power adapter and a DTAP cable, and that's it. So it's a fairly bare bones package, but you get just about everything you need. The T7 doesn't have a touchscreen. Instead, you operate it with a single joystick, and I thought it would be a bit fiddly, and at first it kinda was, but then I used it, got used to it, now I kinda like it. 
Let me show you how it works. So navigating around with the single joystick is actually quite easy. You can see I've got a few tools set up here and to toggle them on and off, you just give it a click. To edit one of the tools, you just give it a click to the right and that gives you access to all of the options. To use the zoom function, all you do is give the joystick a tap up for two times zoom and again for four times zoom and tap it down to go back to normal. Something that wasn't very obvious when I first got this was how to get into the settings of the T7. And to do that, you toggle and hold the joystick to the left. This gives you access to lots of different options, but I imagine the one you'll need the most will be the backlight settings. The default is five, and that's what I keep it on most of the time. On zero, it gets very dark, and of course, all the way up at 10, it gets extremely bright. And I would recommend 10 for outdoor shooting. So you can see this huge difference side by side. Here it is at zero and then at 10 and brightness at 10 is fine outside. If you have it indoors, it's retina searingly bright. Next, let me show you the built-in LUTs because this is a really fantastic feature. There are conversion LUTs for HLG, ARRI Log C, Blackmagic, Canon C Log, DJI, Fuji, GoPro, Panasonic, RED, Sony, no matter what you're using, it's got almost every production camera covered. The image looks gorgeous using the conversion lookup tables for Sony S-Log3. Here you can see it on and off. It's kind of hard to tell because the monitor is on max brightness, but it was giving me a really beautiful image and it helped me get this nicely exposed shot. Now it's time to go through the pros and cons of the OCT7 and I'll start with the pros. The first and biggest pro is obviously the outstanding value you get with the T7. There really is not a lot else out there that can compete with this when it comes to what it delivers for the low, low price. It's also really lightweight and this does make a big difference. If you've got a handheld rig and you're adding a cage, a handle, the microphone, and maybe a separate power option, you really don't want to keep loading more and more weight on. And for its size, the OC is class leading. The display is undeniably beautiful. It's super bright when you need it to be. It's got really great pixel density and brilliant contrast ratio. You just can't go wrong. Also, the exposure and focus tools are excellent. It's got everything that I can think of that I would ever need. And next, the cons. And firstly, it only has one battery slot. Some other monitors on the market do offer two and sometimes you can hot swap. It's a minor thing really because I found the battery actually lasts for quite a while using this monitor. OC don't supply any kind of HDMI cable with the T7. I understand that these are not that pricey and a lot of cameras have different size HDMI inputs, but let's just say I noticed. It's not a touch screen. I'm actually getting on fine without it, but maybe that's something for the next incarnation of the T7. It doesn't have SDI inputs, which doesn't bother me personally. You do get it on the G7. So if you need SDI, just go for the G7. It only costs a little bit more. For me, the battery indicator was not great. It shows you what's left in volts rather than a percentage. I also would have loved the option to have full screen waveform. Also, I usually position my waveform in the bottom right hand corner and there's something odd about the position of it. It's a little bit awkward. Perhaps it would be good to have more positioning options in the menus. Of course, this could come with a future firmware update. And finally, to my opinion, and to me, the T7 is an unpolished gem of a product. Its screen is large and gorgeous, and just when you're out filming and your images look so good on screen, it's just inspiring. Having a good monitor to work with will improve your video, because the better you can see what you're doing, the easier it's gonna to be to nail your focus, your framing, and exposure. The T7 is outrageously bright. In fact, when I've got it on max, I actually find it too bright for indoor shooting. It has a couple of quirks, the single joystick takes a little bit of getting used to, and I did have a hilarious issue when I first switched it on. The default setting of the T7 is to play the camera's audio back through its internal speaker. So I instantly had insane feedback and no idea how to get into the settings and turn it off. The value of the T7 is undeniably fantastic. It's just so much monitor for your money. I would say if you need a really rugged monitor or if you need it to double up as an external recorder or even if you need even more functionality, I would say look elsewhere, but be prepared to spend big. If you just need a large and excellent quality monitor, the OCT7 is it. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about the OCT7 in the comments section below if you want to. I'm down there as much as I can be. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTubers handpicked this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Just hang in